Thanks for the support as a channel member, Momongu Gaming. Now, I think I've figured out where our Champions League run has been going on so far. It's been the lack of blazers in the video. It's been so hot, I've not been able to wear my jackets. Well, fear not. English weather is back. No, oh, I know I'm in Greece, but there's English weather here. The blazers back, boys and girls. Hello and welcome to part 73 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two Champions League group games. We're at home against Sevilla. We're away against Dynamo Kiev. We have to win both games and hope for other results to go our way if we're going to make it into the Champions League knockout rounds for the first time in our history. It doesn't look good. Um, what does look good is our league form because we have continued to win every game this season. 11 games played, 11 games won, 33 points on the board. We're already nine points clear at the top of the table after 11 games. Sanchez is top scorer in the division. Lencina is third. Problem is they're both injured or have both been injured. Sanchez is now finally recovered from his injury, um, but Lencina has now taken his place on the injury list. We just, we just can't keep these boys fit at the moment. So this is the team we're putting out there for the Sevilla game. Um, it is another combination of players that have never played together before because of the amount of injuries we're accumulating. But hopefully a combination of players that will get the job done. We're going with Osman in goal. A back four of Kansarovic, Michaelis, Lawson and Felipeo. Uh, Milo at the base of the midfield. Duffy and Cordoba ahead of him. Sanchez, Acosta and Marola are our front three. All three of those attacking players have been scoring goals in their most recent matches. The problem is Sanchez's most, re Sanchez's most recent match was four games ago before his injury. So he's uh, he's not really fit. He's on 74% match fitness. Not really fit to play, but needs must. We need a win, so we need to get him back in. Marola's been looking very good domestically, but hasn't really done the business in Europe yet. Same really goes for Acosta. Um, I think we've bought, we've, as you can see from our league position in our league form we've assembled a team that is far superior to any of our previous teams as shown by the way we're disassembling the greek league but it's still not quite good enough for the champions league i think the problem we've got is the champions league group stages come so soon after the start of the season before our new players have a chance to gel we are getting better as this champions league campaign goes on and there's sanchez to demonstrate my point with an early goal it's one nil to apollo and that puts us Within, I think, two points of Sevilla with a game to go. Sevilla having to play top of the table and already qualified Tottenham in their final game. Where we're going to have to hope Tottenham are still engaged and looking for a result. That's assuming we do manage to beat Sevilla here. That's a big if. But we are giving ourselves the best opportunity as it stands right now. Let's just get the latest score. I don't... This is the latest glitch I'm having. Latest scores not displaying properly. So it's currently Tottenham nil, Kiev nil. But yeah, I think if the Champions League group stages started in the middle of October, early November, I think we'd have been more than good enough to qualify from this group this year. And I am starting to think we might have to have a summer where we don't have so much player turnover just to give ourselves a chance of qualifying because this team is a good side. And there's Marola to make it 2-0 and really hammer home that point. 2-0 to Apollon. Every time I say we're a good side, we score a goal. It's wonderful stuff. I guess the one, the one silver lining we've got is if we do end up playing Thursday night football again, I think this is a, this te this team is so much better than even last year's team. It's better than the team that made it through to the final several years ago. Now, I think we'd actually have a really good chance of winning the Europa League with this squad, but financially and reputation wise, coefficient wise, all that kind of stuff, it's much better for us to make progress in the Champions League. I think. It's not actually completely clear. If we were to go and win the Europa League, I think that's probably better than getting knocked out of the Champions League in the first knockout round as far as coefficients go. But I'm still, I'm not entirely certain. Kansarovic with the cross. Cordoba's there. Filipao shoots from range. And it, uh, it comes back off the crossbar, I think. How are Powak getting on in their group? It doesn't look like they're, they're playing tonight. So we'll check in on them at some point as well because obviously we need Powak to do quite well if we're looking for coefficient points as well. This is the first season we've had three Champions League qualifiers. Acosta makes it three. I think he's offside. We don't want it to be the last where we get three Champions League qualifiers. Now, at this stage, I don't think there is a way for us to finish level on points with Sevilla. So how much we beat them by doesn't really matter. 
yeah, there's no way we can finish level on points. So we, we in fact, no, we can. If they were to draw maths, Kev, if they were to draw against Tottenham, at the moment, we go above them because they beat us 3-2 at their place. We're now 3-0 up against them at our place. So it is important that we have a better head-to-head -head record with them because then that leaves them having to beat Tottenham, assuming we beat Kiev. A draw stops being good enough if we can maintain this scoreline. So this is this is big. Carnavali is going to come on for Acosta, who's not had a very good game at all. Uh, Cordoba can come off for Dominguez. Um, Gufas is up onto the bench today. That shows shows how light we're getting on players. I mean, Gufas is great, but he's our fifth choice midfielder. We've got Pepe as well, who's usually in the mix ahead of him. But Pepe, um, not in our Champions League squad because he's only been here a year. And he's not homegrown, so Gufas gets to take his spot on it. Well, in fact, he's not officially in the squad either, but because he's homegrown, he doesn't have to be registered because he's under 21. Right, for my final change, I think I'm going to take off Sanchez and bring on Dallas because Sanchez is still recovering from that injury. He's, he's done his job today. Um, Dallas still struggling to get settled in at Apollo, and I did say Dallas signing for us would be the worst thing he could possibly do. And I think I'm demonstrating it by not really using him as much as I could. And I think we probably need to move him on sooner rather than later. Just because he is, he was Greek, he was Greek football's bright young hope. He was Greek player of the year last year. He's just broken into the national team. The last thing he needs is to be sat in our reserves for the next two or three years. So we'll give him this season to try and break into our team. If he's not a regular in our team by the end of the season... He needs to he needs to move on, even if he's on the cusps of the team, because we need to we need him to be playing regular football because we need him for the national team, because he is one of the better Greek players that are out there. Michaelis plays it across to Milo, Carnavali to Delas. Delas cutting inside, but his shot from range is not a good one. And importantly, it looks like we're uh, we're not letting Sevilla get in and grab anything in the way of goals. Dominguez! Thought he was going to make it four. Dallas Cannavale, there is number four. Apollon four, Sevilla nil. After a, after a game like this, if there's any justice in the world, we finish above Sevilla and get that second qualification spot from this group. We need Tottenham to at least hold them to a draw in the second game in this episode while we hopefully go and beat Dynamo Kiev. And I can't help but think if we'd have played Sevilla, we, uh, Sevilla away was our first game in the campaign this year and we very nearly pulled off an upset i think it was like our third game of the season that though is a fantastic result kansarovic gets a big pat on the head and now we just cross our fingers and hope everything goes our way in the final group game well, injuries and now illness continue to sweep their way through our squad. Marola now out for over a month with a twisted ankle. Acosta also going to be out for three weeks with a twisted ankle. Duffy is suspended and has a cold. Philippao has just recovered from a cold. <laughs> Lencina can play some of this game. And that's about all we're going to be able to get out of him because um, Fernandez, who would ordinarily come in on that side as our third choice right winger, isn't registered in the squad. Neither is Sati, neither is Pesic. We are the barest of bare bones as we go into this must-win game against Dynamo Kiev. But it really is must-win because of the reasons we said before. Those reasons. Don't need to go into it again. You know the score. Um, we won the two intervening games, by the way, as you'd expect us to. 13 from 13 now. The league, easy peasy. Um, but this is this is, this is is the team to see if we can get into the knockout rounds of the Champions League for the first time. Osman in goal, a back four of Kansarovic, Michaelis, Lawson and Felipao, Milo at the base of the midfield, Dominguez and Corboda ahead of him, um, Sanchez and Lencina behind Carnavali up front. We don't really have anything in the way of a substitute. If this doesn't go well, um, Pepe, who I thought wasn't in our Champions League squad, not entirely sure how he's now appeared in it. I swear he showed us unregistered before. And Delas, really, though, Delas and Pepe are probably the two who could potentially come on and change the game in a positive direction. Um, I think what we're probably going to have to do when Lencina has to come off Sanchez, who has been training to play on the right-hand side, because he can use either foot. Sanchez will go over to the right, and Delas can come on on the left. That's assuming Sanchez doesn't pick up another injury, which wouldn't surprise me at all with the way things have been going. Right, we need to keep a firm eye on what's going on in the Sevilla 
Tottenham game. As long as Sevilla don't win, a win for us is enough to get us through. So we are relying on Tottenham to, at the very least, not lose, which I think is a reasonable expectation based on how they've been playing in this tournament so far. If they go there and lose, I call shenanigans. Dominguez, his first start for the club, plays it forward to Sanchez, who nods it back to Kansarovic. It's Dominguez again. Um, Dominguez playing it across to Felipao, who finds Lencina. Felipao again um, tries to slot it through to Lencina. Can't quite get it there, but Felipao with the cross at the third time of asking and finds Claudio Sanchez for his 14th goal of the season already. The man is ridiculous. We've got so many exciting youngsters in this squad. We've got, it's got to get to the point where we've got to keep a few of them. That's the, that's the thing we've got to try and do. And um, because I could easily see Duffy, Cordoba, Sanchez, Lencini all leaving for big money this coming summer. We're already going to be losing Lawson, who goes back to Manchester City. We need to, it's Lencina, not Lencini. I need to learn his name. Um, but we need to try and keep some of these in the squad. Although, in positions where we've got new players to come through, like we could afford to lose one of Duffy or Cordoba because we've got Dominguez. We could afford to lose um, either of the wingers because we've got Sanchez. Uh, not Sanchez. Sanchez is one of them. We've got German. We've got Fernandez. We've got Marola. So we do have other options. So I guess we just keep the money flowing and use it to constantly reinvest in more wonder kids and just become that club. I don't mind being that club. It's a lot of fun being that club. Michaelis plays it forward to Milo. Dominguez now plays it to Cordoba. Milo, Dominguez again. Ball over the top looking for Carnavali who's in and can't quite squeeze it past the goalkeeper. Still nil-nil in the Tottenham Sevilla game which does put us up to second as things currently stand. Sanchez with the in-swinging corner. Michaelis can't quite force it past the goalkeeper from the corner. It remains 1-0 but we do have another corner. Milo going over to take this one and we know Milo can hit a beauty of an in-swinger causing problems in there again uh, but once again Dynamo Kiev managing to uh, wrestle the ball clear. I would be very happy around about now if we saw a Tottenham goal go in because it starts to ease some of the pressure a little bit. Obviously if Sevilla are to grab a goal then whatever we do here is for nothing. We can't there's no way for us to get round it if Sevilla win. Dominguez, Sanchez, looking for the ball over the top again. This is Corboda who's chased forward trying to get onto it. And Dominguez does very well to win it back in midfield. Carnavali's there and Carnavali scores. It's his fifth goal of the season. It's 2-0 to Apollon. But as we're celebrating that, heartbreak is coming in from Spain as Sevilla have gone ahead against Tottenham. So despite us going 2-0 up and being delighted... As it stands right now, we're down to third place in the group again. And it's two of our former teams from non-league to legend, Tottenham and Sevilla. We need them to cooperate and uh, sort this out for us. Tottenham, we need a goal. Can we send Can we send, send players to Tottenham? I mean, Sension should be in there explaining to his teammates why it's so important that Apollon get to get to carry on in the Champions League. Not only does it help with our coefficients and all that kind of stuff, but the, staying in the Champions League for an extra round or two might be the difference. With the, Tottenham have equalised! It could be the difference between us having to sell all these players or not. If we could get a £100 million balance without having to sell any players, then we don't have to sell the players. And um, But Tottenham, with the goal back, means that once again, we're back up to second in the group. And this is going to go down to the wire, I think. Kiev forcing... Forcing an, an opportunity, but Osman is more than equal to it. Clears it to Lencina, who's now got the chance to run at the Dynamo Kiev defence. He plays it across to Sanchez, who's got absolutely nobody supporting him. And all he can do is head it forward and out for a goal kick. But it looks like half time with 45 minutes to go. We have one foot in the first knockout round of the Champions League for the first time in our history. We just need Tottenham to not mess up. It annoys me that I have to keep scrolling to see that game. That's the only game we care about. This is where we need picture in picture. Once again, Milo now at the base of the midfield, looking for options, gives it to Dominguez, who's much better at picking the options. Sanchez with the cross. Lencina's there, and it's three. And we've definitely done our bit. We've kept our side of the bargain. Ten points. I mean, to be fair, I was going to say ten points would be enough to get through in most groups. Looking through, it really isn't. And as we've shown in two games against Tottenham, if we come up against anybody any good, even if we stay in, we're getting knocked out. We're still not quite upper echelon. But as I suspected before all this started, neither are severe. 
We beat them pre-season. We beat them again in our home game. And it all goes back to that 3-2 defeat that we had when we were we were 2-0 down, got it back to 2-2, and then conceded a late goal. If we'd have just managed to hold on, things would be very different now. Lencina's in. Beautiful. <laughs> just passes it back to Carnavali. How often do you see that in Football Manager? Answer, almost never. Um, Lencina, completely unselfish when he could have easily scored himself. You, I mean, nine out of ten, ten times, Lencina scores this himself. But he's got a man in a better position and just slots it over to him. Completely unselfish. Wonderful stuff. And it's 4-0 now. And I think we can probably take Lencina off at this point because he wasn't fully fit to play anyway. So um, Delas can come on for him. Sanchez can go over to that side. And that will do as a first substitution. Um, and then I guess we'll get Pepe on, probably for Cordoba, just to, to protect Cordoba because everyone else is dropping like flies. Sanchez with the goal from range. I think it's been disallowed. Um, it's still 1-1 between Tottenham and Sevilla. We, I would love a Tottenham goal. Just, I don't like, I don't like sitting here knowing that any moment Sevilla could score again and knock us out. It's a horrible feeling <laughs> being completely powerless to stop it happening. Right, Cordoba is going to come off for Pepe. Um, we're also going to take off, we're also going to take off Milo because he's played a lot of games He's been pretty much ever-present. There's no reason for him to stay on at this point when we're 4-0 up. Um, so we can bring one of our youngsters on to play the final 20 minutes in that defensive midfield position. Delas now. We have an opportunity to show us how good he is with 20 minutes to go in a game that's already won. Charging into the area. That's just poor. He's got Carnavali in the middle. Just slide it and put it into his path. Do what Lencini did. Lencina did. And um, Carnavali's in again and hits the inside of the post. Come on, football manager. We deserve this. Do not mess with me. It's still Sevilla 1, Tottenham 1. And it's an in-swinging corner. Lawson's there. That's Ryan Lawson's fifth goal of the season already. You can tell we've uh, stepped up our set-piece threat. Um, I was going to say because of Milo, but obviously Milo not taking this one because he's gone off. Papen Papenag Papenagis has come on into the defensive midfield start and hit a corner just as good as the ones that Milo's been hitting all year. Uh, Papanagis again. Um, I don't know who that. I think that's Carnavali chasing in in the middle there. And come on, Tottenham, just give us a Spurs goal for goodness' sake. It's all I want. It's all I've ever wanted. I've been so nice to Tottenham over the years. Big Spurs fan, me love them. Would never say a bad word about them. And I need them to return the favour for me now. I think there probably is football manager karma that is going to punish me with Tottenham just rolling over and conceding a goal in a minute, isn't there? I can kind of sense it coming. Um, and let's face it. Oh, Tottenham have scored. I was about to make excuses with 10 minutes to go. Tottenham have gone ahead against Sevilla. And we're now above Sevilla by a point. Not just on the head-to-head. -head. Carnavali's in again here. He makes it five. It's, the, it's six. Sorry, he makes it six. With his seventh goal of the season. On this performance alone... We deserve to be into the next round. We are absolutely the second best team in this group behind Tottenham. We beat Sevilla over two legs. We've destroyed Dynamo Kiev over two legs. Yes, we're not as good as Tottenham, but we don't know. I mean, Tottenham could be like potential winners of the whole tournament. We don't know how good Tottenham are. We know they were able to throw £50 million at us for Sensi on this summer just gone. So they've clearly got some money to throw around. This isn't real world Tottenham. Um, and Kiev trying to get the ball moving forward again, but lose out to Sanchez, who is now charging down this right-hand side. He's not missed a beat moving from the left to the right. Plays it into Carnavali, who's in again, and once again forcing a corner. This is our, what is this, our fifth, 14th corner of the game. We've had 10 clear-cut chances in this match. I don't remember the last time. I don't think we've ever got to 10 clear-cut chances in a European game before, that's for sure. There's maybe been some league games or some matches against dodgy lower league teams in the Carabao Cup or something like that. But to have 10 clear-cut chances in a Champions League group game is ridiculous. What a performance. And if we get robbed of our spot in the knockout round now, the only justice will be that we go and win the Europa League. That'd be the only thing that would make me feel better if this turns on its head one more time. Papapanagis, I think his name is. Too many letters in there. We need to... What has he just done? He must like defending corners because that was absolutely mad what he's just done there. 
11 clear cut chances now. Corner comes in from Sanchez. It's headed clear. This was all part of the plan. They had a counter attack plan from a corner. That is a beautiful tackle from tackle tackle from Felipao. Who I mean, I don't I don't see that we're missing Sensi on at all. I think we've we've brought in a right back who is of equal quality in Felipao. I think that's the real thing we're noticing with this this squad this season. We lost some big players and we don't miss any of them. We're not missing Betrancourt. We're not missing Bozic. We're not missing Damien. We're not missing Sension. We've replaced them all and added further depth to the squad. It's There's huge steps in the right direction again from Apollon here. I hope enough to convince Ryan Lawson that he wants to come and join in the fun permanently again and come home. Um, he is, his loan expires this summer. We asked how much it would be to buy him this summer just gone. City wanted £114 million for a player they bought off us for £5 million and have only ever just... They've just sent him back to us for five years on loan and let us carry on developing him. If anything, they should say, look, call it £30 million and the rest of it is a thank you for developing and helping. He's cost them nothing for five years. We've paid all his wages. We've taken care of all his development. We'd, it'd literally just be us giving them... Thirty million pound as a thank you for the five million pound loan we got to uh, to help us up and running all those years ago, but we need our player back as well. Thanks. Um, right? Is it still? It's now three one to Tottenham, and I think it's fairly safe to say we're through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League, which for a club like us is absolutely massive. There's your confirmation that we're through. There's the confirmation that more money is starting to pile up as well. Um, do we know when the draw is? I think I think the draw is over a week away, so I think we'll find out who we've got in tomorrow's episode when we play it. Let's just double check when the knockout round draw is. Yeah, we've got we're not gonna find out today who we're playing, but you'll find out in tomorrow's episode because tomorrow's episode will be those games, or at least the first one of those games. Um in the Champions League first knockout round for the first time in our history. Awesome. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>